This is a special edition of Cannabis Corner today. I'm going to be focusing this entire episode on talking about hemp as a building material. So I'm going to answer a few different questions. What does it mean to build with hemp? What are the benefits of building with hemp? And who are the industry leaders in the United States as of right now? Please keep in mind, I'm going to be focusing on the people and organizations who are actively creating products and using hemp in building projects and also training other people on how to do the same thing. There are many other people and businesses that are vital to the hemp building ecosystem, such as farmers and processors, that I'm not going to be discussing at all in this video. Also, this is not an exhaustive list of everyone who's using hemp in building projects across the country, so I apologize in advance for anyone that I don't talk about in this video. Let's start at the beginning and talk about the four main outputs of the hemp plant. So that's the floral output, that's where CBD and all these other compounds are found. The grain, which is the seed, can be pressed into hemp seed oil, and the seed itself is high in protein, fatty acids, and other vitamins and minerals. The bast fiber, which is the outer layer of the hemp stalk, which is what is made into rope, textiles, non-woven materials, and a lot of other things. And then the herd fiber, which is the inner woody core of the hemp plant. And if you've ever seen these, they essentially look like hemp wood chips. When we talk about using hemp as a building material, we're really only focused on the herd and the bast fiber. So to start with the bast, it can be used to make a bat insulation, similar to fiberglass insulation, but is obviously much less toxic. And it can also replace spray foam insulation. Another use case is that it can actually be used as a concrete strengthener. So there's a Canadian company called Greenfield Technologies. And if you've watched some of my other Cannabis Corner episodes, you may have seen that they sent 60,000 pounds of their Enforce hemp fiber to China for the construction of the Olympic bobsled and luge courses. So there's no one in the United States supplying that type of material as far as I know right now. So I'm not really going to talk about that when we get into the, the details of this video. But for the fiber, main use case is bat insulation. In regards to hemp herd, that's the primary input and in what's commonly referred to as hempcrete. I'll also refer to it as hemp lime to avoid confusion because sometimes when people are not familiar with the material and they hear the word hempcrete, they infer that it can replace concrete when that is not the case at all. We still need concrete for its traditional use cases like foundations, for example. Let's also think of hemp lime as an insulation, but one that creates a monolithic wall system. So the hemp herd is mixed with a natural cement, which is a hydrated lime and a pozzolan. Those two materials are mixed with water to create a slurry, and then the hemp herd is mixed with that. And that's used to hand cast a wall. So if you have like a form on each side of the wall, you can hand cast it. You can also spray apply it, and you can also turn that into prefabricated blocks or panels. When those things are initially casted, they dry and harden, and then there's some sort of external finishing that gets put on it, which is typically in the way of a lime plaster, but you can use other materials as well. So now I'll talk about some of the benefits of using these materials. Some of these are only applicable to hemp lime and not also applicable to hemp bat insulation, but there's a lot of crossover as well. First one being that they're all natural. All the materials are coming from the earth, whereas traditional building materials, they're full of toxic chemicals that will off gas throughout the life of the product. So putting VOCs in the air, lowering your indoor air quality. Second is that hemp lime is fire resistant. This is the ideal natural material to use in areas that are prone to forest fires. The third is its carbon sequestering properties. So not only is the hemp incredibly efficient at sequestering carbon throughout its growth cycle, the lime, as it hardens and cures, which takes decades, continues to sequester carbon throughout that process. The fourth is that you're creating a vapor open building envelope. So this allows the building to regulate moisture. Part of what provides some of these benefits in hemp lime is that there's a lot of little air pockets throughout the wall system. Those pockets can actually hold moisture, which help regulate humidity. Another aspect of traditional building nowadays is to create a complete seal from the outdoor environment. And so while that has some of its benefits, if any water is able to get inside of that seal, it's going to wreak havoc. It's going to create mold and mildew, and it's going to be expensive to remediate it. So it's much better to just have a vapor open building envelope that regulates that moisture throughout the year. The fifth is that these materials are termite and pest resistant. No animal is going to chew through these materials, hemp lime and the bat insulation. And the last is just the benefits of the thermal mass of the wall itself. It's going to store heat better than a traditional wall system, which allows you to more efficiently heat your home. Now I'm quickly going to cover eight different companies who are pioneering the industry in the United States. They are Hempitecture, Amerishandra, Coexist Build, Hempstone, The Hemp Building Company, Limestrong, 
Lime Works, and Hempwood. So we're starting out with Hempitexture. As a disclaimer, I have invested in Hempitexture. They did a, a fundraise through WeFunder recently. They raised over $5 million. I think their goal was only $1 million. Uh, I'm also not being compensated in any way by any of these companies to make this video. I'm just shining a light on these companies uh, because I want to just increase awareness around using hemp as a building material. So hemp texture, as you can see, they are the manufacturers of hemp wool, which is the fiber bat insulation. So this material is, I think it's over 90% hemp fiber and there's various different thicknesses with corresponding different R values. So whatever R value you need, they have a thickness that will suit that need. They're based in Idaho and they are actually building a manufacturing facility in Idaho to have hemp wool made locally. It's currently made in Canada and they're doing a lot in Idaho with the community of farmers to really put hemp on the map in Idaho. State that I believe was the last state in the country to approve hemp cultivation and kind of adopt the Farm Bill of 2018. So I did a contractor training with Hempitexture back in November of 2020 and met the team, met Maddie and Tommy, really good guys. And the training is something that they're still doing. I don't know when the next one is, but I'll put a link in the description uh, for people to, to get some more info on that. They really are focusing on hemp wool now and, and growing that side of the business, but they used to insulate homes with hemp lime as well. So I'll show you a gallery towards the end. They've insulated some really cool homes with hemp lime. And this is just a press release that they had about how their uh, production line is under construction. Uh, and this is a link that I will put in the description of the video just to, if you had any interest in learning how to use hemp lime and learn about hemp wool, this is a great way to do so. They're in Sun Valley, Idaho also, which is an incredibly beautiful uh, part of the country. So you turn into a little vacation as well, which is what I did. And this is a gallery of some of their work. I'll include this link as well. So this, I'm not sure if you can see these pictures very well, but this is um, a home in Austin, Texas that they did a couple of years back with uh, some Japanese architects that built that, the frame of the house and they insulated it. And some of this wood is like over 300 years old that was used. That's a pretty crazy story with this building. But like I said, it seems that they're focusing now on scaling the hemp wool side of the business. They still provide hemp herd and binder and things like that for people working with hemp lime, but they've kind of focused on getting that production facility up and running in Idaho to scale the bat insulation side of the business. So up next, we have Amerishan Recast Hemp. This is Cameron McIntosh, the founder of Amerishanra, and Chanvre means hemp in French. And he's the US distributor for the Ereasy spray application hempcrete system. And that's what he's using here. <laughs> Getting a little bit of hemp hurt all over himself. And as you can see, it's a it's kind of a messy job. But all of the what's cool about this is that you can reclaim all of the hemp herd that doesn't actually stick to the wall and funnel it back into the system. If you saw one of my past videos, he actually just recently announced that they're going to be manufacturing a very similar system in the United States, in Ohio. So they're changing a couple of components of the machine so that it works better with US-based electrical systems uh, and so that all of the parts can be sourced in the United States as well. But I've heard Cam say that spray applying a hempcrete home is 60% more efficient than hand casting that same square footage. So this is a much more efficient way to insulate homes. And one major aspect, if the, if the hemp insulation industry is going to scale in the United States, this is most likely going to be one of the major reasons why. It's going to be hemp wool insulation and spray application machine systems like this. And so Cam is doing trainings uh, starting in April, I believe. Yeah. So the first training is going to be in April. And he was on the Lancaster Farming podcast to make this announcement. And obviously these systems are not cheap. So he's really encouraging like, if any contractors want one of these systems to come and do the training and that the cost of the training will come out of the cost of the machine if they choose to purchase it afterwards. So he's doing this first one in Pennsylvania. And then I think he mentioned that he's going to do one in the South and then one in California, I believe as well, some at some point later in 2022. And if you go to Amerishanver's Instagram, you can see some of their past work. Uh, and I'll link this in the description of the video as well. Up next, we have Coexist Build. And as they say here and there about us, Coexist Build is a licensed architect-led company that is determined to revolutionize conventional construction practices and bring healthier options to the market. So Coexist is also based in Pennsylvania. And if we scroll down a bit, 
they have a history of firsts here. So in 2019, they made the first hempcrete house on wheels and they worked with Cam at Amerishandra on this. Then they made the first hempcrete factory made block in the United States. This is very common in, in Europe right now, prefabricated hemp blocks and panels. Hasn't really caught on a ton in, in the United States yet, but it definitely will in the future. And so they created the first hemp block on an industrial scale at a factory in Eastern Pennsylvania. And then they had the first installation of a hempcrete block with a spray on hempcrete finish. So that's kind of the, the specification there. I think there had been hempcrete block buildings in the past that had been done before this, but this one was the first one that they did with hemp blocks and then finished it with a spray application. And this next one is incredibly exciting. They're the first ones to build hemp tiny homes. So they sell a DIY kit to make a hempcrete structure at your home. I'm not sure if these are available now. I think they might've sold out, but let's go into the kit and I'll just show a few different pictures. So they're saying this is the only DIY kit designed with hempcrete and hemp lime insulation. And that's, and I've never seen anything like this before I learned about this through Coexist. So, I mean, these are clean looking little structures. You can get them with a loft in it as well. Um, and this is like a lime plaster finish. Nothing crazy, but a small DIY structure that you can build at your own house. And they have a couple different options as well. So I don't know if these are still available right now, but I'm sure if you were interested, submit a form on their website and they will get back to you. Moving on to Hempstone, they are based out of Massachusetts and they do application, consulting, they supply materials and some research as well. And they are responsible for the only two hemp homes in Massachusetts. So they did the Goshen House, which is out in Western Mass, uh, along with Village Carpentry. That's Tom and Jen. And they also worked on the Cape Cod Hemp House, which I have not seen personally, but I've heard people say it's apparently one of the nicest hemp homes in the United States. And they worked with Cam at Amerishandra on that house as well. And so hopefully we'll be able to see some more content from the Cape Cod Hemp House uh, in the near future. But Hempstone does trainings also. So this next link, they have a training coming up, up in Vermont at Yestermorrow, uh, April 23rd and 24th. And so it's a uh, Hempcrete Basics 101, uh, get your hands dirty, learn how to work with this material. These are really fulfilling weekend workshops also. Obviously, you have to pay to go learn about this stuff. But the first one I did in Vermont, it wasn't through Hempstone, but Tom was actually there one of the first days. It was a house that was built on Fable Farm up in Barnard, Vermont. And it was my first experience really working on a home. I had messed around with Hempcrete a little bit at my house, just got some hemp herd, got some lime binder, got some poslins, and was trying different mixtures at home, but it was really cool to actually go to a workshop and learn from people who actually knew what they were doing. Uh, so if you have any interest in this at all and you're in New England, highly recommend checking this event out. Again, I will link this in the description of the video. Moving on, we have the Hemp Building Company and they're based in Colorado. Similar to Hempstone, they're doing installations, trainings, providing materials and, and education. And so you can just buy stuff directly through their site here. They have hemp herd, poslin and lime and, and a few other products as well. And they host some events as well. So there's actually a training coming up on the 27th. I think I'm going to be posting this video probably the 26th. So I will put a link to this for anyone that might be in uh, the Longmont area and perhaps sees this video and uh, doesn't already know about the hemp building company, uh, you can go to that training. So I'll put the link in the description. You can get the tickets here. And they hosted uh, the Rocky Mountain Industrial Hemp Summit in Longmont this past August. So this was the first ever Rocky Mountain Industrial Hemp Summit. So they're really doing a lot for the community in Colorado, spreading education about what hempcrete is, how to work with the material, what its benefits are, which is obviously necessary. We need groups like Hemp Building Company all over the country to educate people in every corner of the United States. And they also did trainings in a bunch of other states, I think in like Texas, Oregon, Kansas. Uh, so they're all over the place spreading education on how to work with hemp as a building material. So up next, we have LimeStrong. They're one of the premier providers of lime plaster. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, one of the most common ways to finish a hemp lime wall is with lime plaster. So LimeStrong sources all of their materials in the United States. 
They've worked closely with Hempitexture. They've made a, a hemp binder as well as a proprietary hemp plaster. And as you can see, I mean, it, it really is a beautiful finish for a wall th with all these pictures circulating. And, and I'll include the link to their Instagram as well. Just some more beautiful pictures. I mean, this one, like, imagine this is your bathroom. Come on. This is gorgeous. So if you are doing a hemp lime project and you're going to finish the wall with lime plaster, Lime Strong is definitely a company that you should check out. And another one of the main lime plaster providers is Limeworks, also based in Pennsylvania. It's kind of a recurring theme here. A lot of the a lot of these companies are based in Pennsylvania. I think in terms of the East Coast, Pennsylvania is going to be a hub when it comes to all in, all things industrial hemp, not just hemp building. Um, but Limeworks has a focus on restoring historic properties. Their platinum line, as it says here, is 90% sourced and produced in the USA. They have a lot of other products as well. And I want to talk about some information that they include in there about us under the global impact section. So like I mentioned earlier, when lime is used as a mortar, it takes a long time to cure and continues to sequester carbon throughout that, throughout that process. So they're saying their customers have saved the environment almost a half million pounds of CO2 released into the atmosphere by sequestering that carbon. And if we scroll down a bit, they focus on restoring historic properties with lime because a lot of the times lime was actually what was used as a mortar in that building when it was built. So it makes the most sense to use the same materials. So they say lime has been used in buildings for millennium as both wall coatings and for structural purposes, withstanding the test of time and infrastructure such as the Great Pyramids and the frescoes of Pompeii. In fact, lime was the primary building mortar throughout the world prior to the 20th century. So this is nothing new. Using lime as a mortar has been around for a long time. So it's about time that we put an emphasis on returning to some of these more responsible and ethical building practices. So the final product I'll talk about today is hemp wood. And they're based in Kentucky and they're making interior non-structural wood products out of locally grown hemp fiber. They have a proprietary binding agent that they've created where they take the locally grown hemp fiber and they're basically compressing the strands together to create various different products. So if you've seen any of my videos, see this picture frame behind me, that's actually hemp wood. And so they have uh, some picture frames on their website that you can buy and um, flooring and lumber, cabinets, furniture, tables, and and then a handful of different blanks as well for people to make bowls and pretty much anything that a woodworker, or wood turner can make, they can make it out of this hemp wood. This is one of the tables, pretty clean looking table. What's cool about this is it's locally grown hemp fiber. There's not many products that are made out of fiber grown in the United States. So it's cool to see hemp wood being one of the leading companies providing these types of products. So there you have it. Now you know what it means to build with hemp, what some of the benefits are, and some of the companies who are leading the charge in terms of growing the industry in the United States. If you like this video and you want to learn more about building with hemp, a couple good resources are obviously any of the companies that I talked about, they'll all be linked in, in the description and they put out content, educational stuff like the workshops and then free content like Amerishanver does a hemp entrepreneur podcast that they have 67 episodes of. So that's a really good source of information. And then the U.S. Hemp Building Association is a great resource. And they're really trying to push forward to get regulatory acceptance from like National Building Code Enforcement to accept uh, that hemp is a viable building material to make it easier to get building permits and things like that for hemp insulated homes and buildings. Hemp Builder Magazine is another great resource. And then every Tuesday, I'm a part of a clubhouse room, Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, where the topic is always just industrial hemp, fiber, herd, market potential, news, people's opinions on different things. It's always a really good conversation. We typically go for like an hour, an hour and a half, really open conversation style. So definitely come join that clubhouse room. I'll link that as well. I'm always putting out content on all the social channels at Matt Talks Hemp. Every Sunday, I put out a video. Basically, it's like a weekly news recap of the cannabis and industrial hemp markets. So check that video out if, this, if these topics interest you. And I really appreciate you watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please let me know what your biggest takeaway was in the comments. I'm really looking forward to hearing kind of what people think of this material if they didn't already know much about it. 
Um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you next time.